Ciao, jewelry makers. I'm Joey Balistrieri, and I am returning with my fourth project from the Bargain Bead Box for January 2024. It's called A Galaxy of Gems, and I have just had so much fun with this box, and it's been such a valuable box. It's the retail value is like $104, which is a lot more than it normally is. And so this is the little project that I was going to share with you today. It is a memory wire ring and I took one of the little stars off of one of the celestial clasps. We had a we had two sets in the box that were magnetic clasps with um, they were stainless steel but they had already had the charms attached and I just took the star from one of them because I used the clasp in another piece and did not need that charm. And so it makes an adorable little dangling bit off of a ring. And the bead that I chose for this one was the bead that represented Venus in this box. It's a an amber crackle glass, a really high quality one, and it's just stunning. So the memory wire for rings looks like this. It's a coil, but it is flat. And it comes in a package from Beadalon. It's ring memory wire and it is flat. This is a really powerful stainless steel cable that has this coating on it and it is a little bit difficult to cut. So you absolutely will need memory wire cutters and also I would recommend the pliers, the snub nose pliers that are made for turning the loops on memory wire. This can be a little stressful on your regular round nose pliers. And so I've done another ring just as a sample here. And I used on this one, the beads that represent Jupiter. These are the 10 millimeter striped agate beads. And I really love this one. It's just beautiful. And so that's just a little tip is the beads on these rings will spin around. So if you have one with beautiful veining or marbling that you really like, you know, it will spin around as you wear it. So a couple of tips. I'm going to preface my whole project today by saying rings are not my forte. It is, I'm trying to do more of them. It's not something that I've ever made a lot of. So I am not super great at making them. And so I just literally threw this one together just to try to give some advice about sizing rings when you're using this memory wire. Just a guideline of what I know from, from practicing with these. So this ring ended up being about a size seven and it's with a 10 millimeter bead. This ring is about a size nine and it's with an eight millimeter bead. And the common denominator is that on both of those, I used exactly one circle of this ring memory wire. I cut it right there. And then by the time you make your, your little loops that roll back, um, that's, a guideline so the size of the bead that you choose is going to take up space in this part that your finger goes into so if you want a really large bead like this one is 10 millimeter you might want to go overlap and give yourself some extra space if you want a larger size ring um, I found this was with the eight millimeter bead if you can kind of get an idea like the opening is not the part that goes on your finger with the eight millimeter bead eight millimeter bead is you know not obstructed at all by the bead so that's hopefully that will help you to get your sizing the way that you want it and then the other little tip that I think could be helpful I'm not a great ring maker so on this one I went for my fine gauge wire that is wrapping to be more neat and you know more not quite a messy wrap but if you're worried about that and maybe you're not great at this technique maybe go for a really organic messy wrap and give yourself a little extra length of this 24 gauge wire so that you can play with that so on this one I sort of wrapped down 
the band of the ring and then wrapped back up again to make it a little bit more chunky and more messy and organic because this is a lot larger bead and I thought it might look nice. So if you're worried about not being able to do this perfectly neat on the shank or band the side part of this ring then go for a messy wrap you know then and have fun with it so this is just a really fun project this one i literally just threw it together just to try to give a little advice on sizing with this memory wire so i have another one of those 10 millimeter striped agates that was supposed to represent jupiter i picked out my two favorites from the bead mix and i just love this one i just I just think it's beautiful. I love the color in it. It's just really, really pretty. So I'm going to do another one with you and I'm going to go for, um, since this is a really much larger bead, two millimeters larger than this, I'm going to go for, on, on this one I cut right here where this would meet this, but I'm going to overlap I'm going to try to get my memory wire cutters in between and overlap because I want a larger ring. I I always make and buy and wear size 8 and size 9 for these two fingers for my fun statement rings. I even tried like I have these big kind of uh, industrial <laughs> cutters and I even tried those. I got it that time and it's it's just really tough to cut so if you can see I gave myself a little extra space there but again for a smaller ring and with a smaller bead you would not overlap your memory wire there and you know I wish I could be more specific on ring sizes but that's my best advice so this is a little bit sharp because those memory wire cutters are not super precise um, so what I do even though I'm going to turn this into a loop and it will be inside, but still I don't want something so sharp, even it could even eventually wear on my finer gauge wire that's going to get wrapped. So I have this little set that I got from Amazon. It's got a file and a couple of different sizes of bead reamers. And when I have a situation like this, even though I'm going to tuck this inside, I'm just going to kind of file down anything that's super sharp it just I just don't think that really anything on jewelry should be sharp and <laughs> pointy so yeah it's still a little bit it's still a little bit rough that's better and this side was not too too bad but so that is you know that's the nature of doing this with the ring memory wire, but it gives you a nice, it gives you a nice, um, you know, a nice band, a nice flat wide gold band. So then I'm going to use the small loop on my snub nose pliers because the large one would probably make this sit up much too high. And this is one of the toughest parts of this project is just getting that loop rolled back. So. I've got to turn it the other way. Sometimes I just get the first little bend in it and then go back in and finish it off. So I'll just get that first little bend and then reposition and get a good grip. As I say, get a good grip as it slips right off. And I had a little kitchen accident. So this. I have two injured fingers, which is probably not the best time to be doing a project like this that requires <laughs> so much strength. And the other thing I've found um, is that you really need this loop to be going back and touching. And if you just can't get those little snub nose pliers in there, you can take your bent chain nose or chain nose pliers and just get a hold of it and give it that final little little turn to get all the way back. It, it's good if it can be touching, but we are going to wrap wire in there, so do the best you can with that. And we're just gonna move to this side and do the same thing on this side. Whoops, I always turn my plier the wrong way. Let's get it started. 
and then get in there and roll it back with all your strength. I'm just putting my pliers away. I had a little interruption. So I got my, my loops in my band and I'm using this 24 gauge beadalon round medium tempered wire and I have maybe a 10 inch piece but like I said uh, you might want to give yourself a little bit extra if you think you might want to play with messy wraps on this side and I'm going to just go in to the loop that's how I did it on my other one and I'm going to wrap this around from the that first loop and really this can be however you would like it just you know you want to try to do the same thing on the other side unless you're just going for really messy organic and so you will want to get your get your pliers handy because once you get it started you'll want to get those in there and you know tidy up those wraps make sure they're all lined up and that it's tight because you know eventually you're going to string your bead on the same wire and so I'm going to I don't want to kink my wire because I want to play with my organic little wraps and sometimes I don't always know like even when I'm wrapping a bead or I I may start out wanting it to be organic and then it ends up looking really great neat or vice versa I don't always know I absolutely make jewelry with my heart so now on my on the little sample that I did I had started to kind of wrap down and then back up again and I may do that on this one too and the other thing is to trim off so that your fine gauge wire is ending on the back side of your bead so you don't want to have anything sharp there either so you just want to make sure that everything can kind of open and close your pliers and chase that wire right around the memory wire. And so I think what I'm going to do, since I am using a 10 millimeter bead before I string my bead on, I think I'm going to do another layer of wraps. I'm going to go for that really chunky, organic, not so planned out and you just want to do it without kinking your wire so this side will be easy because the bead is not on there so you can kind of get it through <laughs> or in between the opening until you're happy with it I'm going to go down and then back up again because the wire has to end up up here at the top so we can thread the bead on and make that bridge across to the other side so like I say, if you think you might want to go for this kind of organic, messy wrap, give yourself a little bit extra wire. Okay. Now I'm just going to warm that wire and make sure it's nice and straight before I get my bead on. And I really like the way my kind of messy wrap turned out I'm just going to flatten it a bit and tighten it kind of play with it make sure that I like it before I get the bead on and go on to the other side maybe go around one more time pull it nice and tight I'm not happy with that little way the wire landed right there let me see if I can correct it Oh, I kind of like the wire going across the wraps like that. Yeah, you just play with it until, you know, you're happy with the way it landed. So then I'm going to thread on my bead. This part is really simple. And then you just want to pay attention to 
since I did this one coming out this side of the loop, I think I'm going to pull this over to the opposite side and wrap it that way. And even let's, I want to try to get my, my wire inside that loop without kinking it. I want to do a couple of wraps on the inside of that loop. So once the bead is on, this part can be a little tricky, but you can use your pliers, keep that wire warm in your hand. You can use your pliers and see what I'm doing, just a little twisting motion because I, we want it to be tight at this point. And then once you have it secured, oh, I just love the way the bead moves on this design of a ring. And then just, you know, kind of push it through the ring band now with your thumb and get those wraps going. And you do want to, you know, it's a ring. It's, this is the shank of the ring. So we do want to try to match this a little bit, but that's where I said, maybe go for a really organic, messy, purposefully messy wraps. So you don't have to stress too much. You know, I did one each way. I did this one where I just really fussed over my wraps and made them as, as perfect as I could get them. And then I decided, since I was going for a larger bead on this one, to try something different. And so, you know, that's the, that's the fun of it. So I'm looking at where I came down on the other side. And I think I'm going to go one more time and then start wrapping back up towards my loop. And I just want to pay attention as I near the end of my wire that I am able to cut the end of my wire so that it's underneath, you know, and not sticking out and not going to catch on anything. And let's see, I do see one thing I want to adjust with my plier on this side right here before I snip that wire. I just want to pull that down a little bit. And let's see, I'm going to go as I did on that side. I have this little section where it crosses over, so I'm going to try to do that here and just tighten everything front and back, you know, on the inside and on the outside. And let's see, I think I can go at least one more time. I'm liking the way this one is turning out. I have to see how I did on my sizing. So I'm going to come around to the back and I'm going to snip this on the inside. And then just like we do when we do a wire wrap or anything else, tuck that anything that's sharp, tuck it in. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got my perfect size on that one. So that little overlap is the trick. And I got my messy wraps on both sides. I like it. And so now I'm going to borrow the other little star from this charm. But we also had, I use them all <laughs> in my bracelet, but if you had any of these left, this could be really pretty as a dangle on this ring as well, because we got some really, see how tiny we got some really little ones there were small medium and large in this little bead mix and they are beautiful they would be if you have one left over they are diamond cut so that would be really pretty as a charm on this little charm ring but i'm going to borrow this one because i'm working on a fifth project from this box and i will use the clasp but I don't need to have the charm. So I'm going to borrow the little star charm and let's see which side, I guess it doesn't matter, but I guess I'll put it on this side. And it is that simple. Close that jump ring really well. And this little, this little um, Jupiter ring is finished. I think it's such a fun, sweet project. And you know, it's a good practice as I'm doing, I'm kind of practicing with my, my ring skills here. 
And you know, the more you do, the more you start to understand the ins and outs of, of the different aspects of jewelry making. But I really, really think this is a fun project. And so if you've never played with this ring memory wire, it's not very expensive. And maybe you expand your repertoire. And you know, you could also do this project with regular wire, like with 16 gauge wire. You could do the same thing with 16 gauge, even 18 gauge wire. You might want to put it on a ring mandrel and work harden it. But you could do this exact same design without the ring memory wire. I just had seen it on Amazon and thought I would play with it and give it a try. And I do like the little width that you get with it. So I am so happy that you guys chose to watch my video today. I thank you so much for your time and I will see you in the next video. Ciao jewelry making friends.